Welcome to Hollywood. The Armed Forces Radio and Television Service brings you the Hollywood Radio Theater, starring Alan Ladd, Van Heflin, and Ruth Hussey in Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you a story of our courageous Western homesteaders and their dramatic fight against the cattle barons. It's George Stevens Shane. Appearing in their original roles, we have Alan Ladd and Van Heflin. And as their co-star, lovely Ruth Husky. Shane won an Academy Award nomination as Best Picture of the Year for Paramount Pictures in 1954. Now Act One of Shane, starring Alan Ladd in the title role. Van Heflin as Starrett, and Ruth Hussey as Marion. Summer and winter, the tops of the mountains were capped with snow and wreathed about with clouds. The valley below was rich in beaver, deer, elk, and bear. These brought the hunter and the trapper. The valley was rich in pasture land, and this brought the cattle. The pasture land was rich in loam, and this brought the homesteaders. People like Joe and Marion Starrett. That's Joe chopping wood out by the barn. And that singing you hear, that's Marion stirring the supper kettle. Oh, yes, and little Joey with his twenty-two rifle. expect to find any fences around here. Bang! Bang! Ah. Well, you're a little touchy, aren't you, mister? Pulling a gun on a boy of eight? I didn't see him coming. All I heard was the gun cocking. I'm... I'm sorry, boy. Joey? Joey, give me that rifle. I, I told you. I just wanted to show it to him, Ma. I bet you can shoot, mister. Can't you? Well... A little bit. I was wondering where your friends were. My friends? Yes. What are the Riker boys up to this time? You know, I wouldn't know a Riker from your Jersey cow. Mm-hmm. Joey, you better go inside. Oh, my. Now, mind. Into the cabin, quick. All right. Start Yes? What is it now, Riker? I, uh, came to let you know I got that beef contract for the reservation. All right, now I know it. Well, maybe you don't understand me. I'm going to need all of my range. You're going to have to get off this place before the snow flies. It happens to be mine, Roof. I'm homesteading it. We don't care what you call it, Starrett. If you're going to be stupid, me and my brother can blast you and them squatters right out of here. Well, I don't frighten easy. You know and I know that the time for gun blasting a man off of his place has passed. Yeah, well, and right now you're trespassing on my claim. Now get off. Your claim? <laughs> How about that, boys? <laughs> Maybe you'd better do what Start says. Yeah? Who are you, stranger? A friend of Start's. <laughs> well, Start, you can't say I didn't warn you. All right, come on, boys. Get <laughs> Well, I guess I'll be moving along, too. Uh, Joe, supper's almost ready. Oh, fine. Uh, Joe? Uh, oh. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, wait, uh, mister. Something? Yes, I'm sorry about the way I acted, taking you for one of the Rikers, and, uh... Oh, well, now, you heard what the little woman said. Why, why don't you stay and eat with us? Now, how about it? Well, well I... now, sure you will. <laughs> you know, I I just plumb forgot. Uh, my, my name is Star, Joe Start, and uh, this here is Marion. I'm pleased to meet you. And uh, uh, you are uh, 
Well, just... Just call me Shane. Mind if I ask where you're bound, Mr. Shane? One place, another. Some place I've never been. Mm-hmm. Well, I know one thing. The only way they're going to get me out of here is in a pine box. What do you mean, Pa? Joe, don't talk like that. No, that's the truth, Marion. We've got our roots down here. This is the first real home that we've ever had. The only thing is that there's just more work here than I can do. You know, cutting wood and plowing, seeding and, and fencing. If I could uh, just hire me a good man. You had one, Joe. Uh, yeah, until the Riker brothers roughed him up a bit and run him off. They knocked his teeth out, didn't they, Pa? Joey. <laughs> well, that was elegant dinner, Mrs. Start. If you'll excuse me, I... Mr. Sheen didn't even say goodbye. Well, no, no, Joey. He's not gone. His gun and cartridge belt are still hanging on the wall. He wouldn't leave without him, huh? Not anybody like Mr. Sheen, Joey. Joe, listen. Well, I'll be doggone. Well, I guess he really did appreciate your dinner, Marion. Shane! Shane, now leave some of that there stump for me. I've been trying to get that thing out of there for a year. Ma. Yes, dear? Mr. Shane could sleep in the barn, couldn't he? I suppose. You think Pa's going to ask him to stay? I think he has, Joey. I think he's already done it. Bang, bang, bang! What are you shooting at, Joey? Riker's! Bang, bang! You getting any? I missed one. Oh? Mr. Shane, would you learn me to shoot? Well, uh, you think you're old enough? Sure I am. Shane? Yeah? There's a load of fence wire waiting for me at Grafton's general store. Do you want to go in and pick it up for me? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Pa, I'm old enough, ain't I? For what, son? To learn to shoot. Oh, yeah, I suppose. All right, Shane, I got the team all hitched up, so whenever you're ready. Well, I better get started. Oh, uh, uh, while you're in town, Shane, you can buy yourself some work clothes. Well, uh, that is, if you'd like to stay on here. <laughs> what can I bring you, Joey? Soda pop. I'll see what I can do. Uh, Shane. Yeah? Uh, Riker and his men hang out at Grafton, so you be careful. I, I don't want my trouble to be none of yours now. Yeah, I, I know you don't. Pa, why ain't he wearing his gun? <laughs> well, Shane's going to trade at the store, son, not hold it up. But his gun looks good on him, Pa. It goes with him. Mm -hmm, maybe. <laughs> well, looks like Ernie Wright coming. Pa, could you whip Shane? Uh, well, what for? Shane's on our side. Well, howdy, Joe. Yeah, how goes it, Ernie? No good. I'm pulling up stakes. I'm leaving this here valley. Now, now, Ernie, you've said that before. Yeah, but the Riker brothers hadn't busted in all over my wheat. Last night, they tore down the fence, drove their steers right through my crop. Ruined everything. Oh, that's that bad. Bad. Joe, I'm... I'm just wore down and out. Tired of being bullied by them fellas called a pig farmer and a sod buster... I'm leaving. Now, now, don't go and throw up your tail, Ernie. Now, I tell you what. I tell you what we'll do. We'll have a meeting here tonight, right here at my place, and, and we'll figure out something. Yeah, just more talk. No, now, maybe not. You just be here tonight, Ernie, and spread the word around to the others. Tell them that this time we're going to stand up to those Rikers. Mr. Grafton. Yeah? How much do I owe you? Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, work pants, two shirts, and a belt. Let it be, uh, young man, you owe me two dollars and two bits. Oh, well, yeah. yeah the exact amount. Thanks. Oh, by the way, have you got any soda pop? Sure do. Just step through those swinging doors and ask the barkeep. Thank you very much. Hey, 
Hey, Will, you smell something bad in here all of a sudden. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe something like, uh, something like pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bartender. <laughs> yep. What do you have? You got any soda pop? <laughs> Uh, just what flavor would you like? Uh, sod buster, lemon, or uh, or strawberry, or or lilac, huh? <laughs> you sticking to me? Oh, sure I am. Hey, wearing a brand new shirt too. Did you just buy that off of Grafton? Yeah. Well, well. And let's us christen it with a little bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Now you smell like a man. What's going on in there? Chris just fumigated his side <laughs> You take it easy, Chris. Oh, now, why, Grafton? We're just having a nice little talk about one thing or another. Hey, Sodbuster, didn't we see you out to Joe Starrett's place yesterday? Yeah, who's we? Why, well, Roof and Morgan Riker, a couple of others. Sure, you're the one. I'm working for Starrett. Oh. Here's your bottle of soda pop, mister. Thank you. You're not going to drink that in here, Sodbuster. Start moving toward that door. Go on, I said. Get out. <laughs> See that, boys? Mr. Soda Pop is just as gutless as the rest of us. <laughs> Everybody's here. Well, I had to finish the evening chores, Joey. In the parlor? Yeah. Fine. Mr. Shane, would, would you take this pot of coffee along with you? Everybody needs warming up. Sure. Oh, the cups? I already laid them out on the parlor table. All right. Joey, time to well, get ready for bed. Uh, now, that's just what Riker's trying to do. He's trying to scare us. Shoo us off here like a flock of chickens. But I'm not leaving. Not now or any other time. Hey, Joe. Joe, the coffee. Uh, oh, oh, thanks, Shane. Here, I'll pour that. Yes, most of you here don't know Shane. Uh, Shane, uh, this is Ernie Wright. Howdy. Hello. And uh, Fred Lewis. Yeah. Glad to I see you. I've seen you in town. And Axel Shipstead. How do you do? And Yank Potts, Ed Howes, Luke oh, Johnson, oh, and uh, Stonewall Torrey oh, out here. Glad to know you. Well, we've just been talking over about what to do about Riker, Shane. Some of the boys are kind of worried about going into town for supplies. You know, they're afraid that Riker's boys may try to jump them. Not me, they won't. I'll put on my thirty-eight and go into town any time I please. You leave your gun at home, Tory. I got a better idea. Now, on Saturday, we'll all just get together and we'll go into town in one bunch. They won't try anything with eight of us. How do you figure eight? There's seven of us. Well, with Shane here... We can't count on Shane for anything. Uh, you sure approved that. Now, hold on now. Now, just watch what you're saying. Ask Shane what happened between him and this Chris Calloway that works for Riker. I saw it and I heard it. What is this, Shane? He says he saw it and heard it. Let him tell it. Well, Fred? Well, Shane let this Calloway buffalo him in Grafton Saloon. Now Calloway's going around bragging how he put the run on a sod buster. Well, maybe he did and maybe he didn't, Fred. I told Shane to stay away from trouble. It looks like he just did what I told him to. Shane, where are you going? Well, I thought you could talk easier if I'm not around. Shane, tell him it ain't so. Joey, will you hush up? I heard him, Shane. I was listening. But I know you ain't afraid. Thank you, Joey. You wouldn't let anybody scare you unless you were just pretending. That's what you were doing, weren't you? Just pretending. It's, it's a long story, Joey. I think we understand, Shane. Maybe. Good night, ma'am. Shane? Ma'am? I hope... I hope the barn isn't too wet for you tonight. Oh, it won't stop me from sleeping. Good night. 
Good night. Shane. Joey? I told you to get ready for bed. Uh Uh-huh. Joey. Yeah? Don't get to like Shane too much. Why not? Well, because. Because you mustn't. Is there something wrong with him? No. Well, then, why shouldn't I? You'll be moving on one day, Joey. You'll be upset if you get to liking him too much. You'll be off. We'll hear Act Two of Shane in a moment. With our American servicemen in many countries around the world, they have a wonderful opportunity to observe new customs and traditions. What might have seemed strange before is becoming pretty familiar to them. For instance, take this business of superstitions or omens. In Holland and Germany, if you meet a left-handed person on a Tuesday morning, that's a bad omen. In Sweden, if you turn around when starting out on a business trip, it's liable to turn out badly. German girls place their shoes at right angles by the side of their beds to bring a visit from their sweethearts. And in Japan and the Far East, there's a superstition to cover practically every event of the day. Well, all these things might sound strange, but as our servicemen have observed, we have plenty of superstitions, too. Let's just count some of the things that are lucky or unlucky. Finding a horseshoe? Lucky. Four-leaf clover? Lucky. A black cat crossing your path? Unlucky. Walking under a ladder? Unlucky. Breaking a mirror? Seven years bad luck. Spilling salt? Unlucky. Unless you throw some over your left shoulder. Knocking on wood? Lucky. A rabbit's foot? Lucky. Well, those are just a few of them. Lots of people carry a lucky coin or a charm of some sort. All of us have a lucky number. And whenever we have something good happen to us, we know it's our lucky day. People the world over are great believers in this business of luck. That's all the superstitions are based on. They're either meant to bring on good luck or keep bad luck away. According to the customs and traditions of your own people, you do certain things to try to influence that luck. Now, the way of doing things may vary between different people, but the ideals are the same. These customs are important to the people who follow them, and our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill by observing the customs of other people in other lands. Now, our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Shane, starring Alan Ladd in the title role, and Van Heflin as Starrett, and Ruth Hussey as Marion. Saturday came, and with it, the Homesteaders' weekly shopping trip to Grafton's general store. But this Saturday was to be very different, and long remembered. Howdy, sir. What can I do you for? Well, you're going to have to ask my wife. Grafton Marion's got the shopping list. You have one thing for sure. We, we need plenty gunpowder to make fireworks. What kind of fireworks? Yeah, for a big celebration. Fourth of July and your star at wedding anniversary all the same day. Oh, my God, that's right. Hey, Marion. Yes, Joe, I'm coming. Mr. Grafton, where I get for this empty soda pop? Well, one bottle brings just about one stick of candy. Peppermint? Peppermint. But first, you go through those swinging doors over there, and you give the bottle to Will. All right. Uh, Joey. Yeah, Shane? Uh, I'll take that bottle in for you. Well, if you want to. Please, I want to. Well, now, looky here what we got. Uh, yeah. There's a sod buster. The one we call soda pop. <laughs> Bartender. Yep. Uh, two whiskeys. Two? Hey, look, you pig farmer. Don't you think you better get back inside with the women and kids? Where it's safe? Don't push it, Calloway. Where? <laughs> get going. Two whiskeys. Take his money, Will, but I'm getting the drinks. Yeah. Like this. All right. All right, anybody else? 
You, Riker? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's cool down a bit, huh? <laughs> uh, maybe I could use a man like you. I'm working for Starrett. Hmm? Whatever he's paying, I'll double. I'm not interested. What's so good about Starrett? I like him. Uh-huh. And he's got a pretty wife. Why are you dirty, slinging old man? All right, all right. I gave you your chance. Nobody messes up one of my boys and gets away with it. Now we're going to rough you up, Shane. We're going to ride you out of this valley. Shane! Joey. Joey, get out of here. But, Shane, there's too many. Let's go. You wouldn't want me to run away, would you? Go on, Joey, please. But there's too many, Shane. Too many. All right, boys. Close that light of air. They are, are they? Come on, honey. At it now. We, we, we better stay out of it, Joe. No, it, it, it ain't all right, but I'm going to make it mine. Here, give me that axe handle. All right, boys. Here's another. You bet there is, right there. After today, I, I don't think those Riker brothers will give us any more trouble. No trouble at all. <laughs> Maybe not. Shane, I think I ought to put some of this turpentine on that cut of yours. Whatever you say. It's going to hurt bad. Oh, Ma, you wouldn't say nothing, no matter how much it hurt. Joey, back to bed. You wouldn't say nothing, would you, Shane? Joey. Would you? Well, I... I don't know, Joey. You see, I just might no, you wouldn't. Joey, did you hear me? All right. But will you come in and kiss me goodnight? Yes. Right now? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shane, I'll fix that cut in just a minute. That's all right, Mr. Start. I'll... I'll take care of it. Now, into bed. Ma, I just love Shane. Do you? I love him... Almost as much as I love Pa. That's all right, isn't it? He's a... a fine man, Joey. Don't you like him? You now get under the blankets, Joey. Don't you, Ma? Yes. I like him too, Joey. Good night, Ma. Joe... Where'd Shane go? Out to the barn. He's turned in. Oh. What's the matter, honey? Hold me, Joe. Mary Ann, what? No, don't say anything. Just... Just hold me. Hold me tight. Bang, bang, bang! Hey, Shane, come on, you promised. Come back, Joy. Gee, you really brought your gun, huh? Yeah. You really gonna show me how to shoot, huh? Well, like you said, Joey, I promised, but... Well, first of all, you see... You see how I wear my holster? Uh-huh. It's higher than Paul wears his. Well, most men wear them either too low, and some either wear them too high. Either way, it... You see, it takes too long to draw. You see, right about here is just right. Gosh, is that the way the real gunfighters do? No, not necessarily. You see, each one has a trick of his own. One likes a shoulder holster. Some like two guns. But, Joey, one's all you need. Let's see you shoot, Shane. Please, please, Joey. Please, Shane? Well, what do you want me to shoot at? Well, uh... Could you hit that little white rock way over there? Maybe. You want a fast draw on a hit? Uh-huh. Gosh almighty. Golly. Shane. Ma, did you see Shane? Did you see him bust that rock all the flinters? Yes, Joey. Now you run along, get ready for the 4th of July party. But Ma, Shane's going to show me how to shoot. Better do what your mother says, Joey. Oh. Bang, bang! 
Bang, bang! Shane, I don't want my boy to build his life around guns. A gun is just another tool, Marion. It's as good or as bad as the man who uses it. As the man himself. Shane? Yes? Nothing. Shane! You come along to the celebration over the ship's heads, aren't you? Well, if they want me. Well, of course they do. Now go on and hitch up the team. We're going to have the doggone this big time you ever saw. <laughs> with any man in this world. Oh, yeah. Hey, boy, who's getting thirsty? It's Storm Altori, and look what he's bringing. That's right, bottles and bottles of the stuff. I like the cleaned out draft. Tori, hi, Joe. Happy anniversary to you and the Miss Tori, I thought we decided none of us was going to go into town alone. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. When I went into Grafton's, I walked right past Riker. Say, by the way, I saw Riker talking to a new man in there, a stranger wearing a couple of guns. What's his name? What'd he look like? Oh, hello, Shane. This man, what'd he look like? Well, he's kind of lean. Packs two guns on his hips. Was he wearing a black hat? Yeah, come think of it. Friend of yours? No, but there's a man named Wilson who looks like that. A gunfighter over in Cheyenne. Shane, this Wilson, would you know him if you saw him? Maybe. If it is Wilson, he's fast. Real fast on the draw. You seem to know an awful lot about this kind of business, Shane. Well, maybe we ought to be glad he does. At least we know what's going on. Just what is going on, Joe? I thought we were celebrating our anniversary. Oh. Fourth of July. Well, sure we are, honey. Well, come on, everybody. Now, this is a party. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Mr. Shane. Mr. Shane. Yes? Uh, uh, I've been wanting to go to the blacksmith shop, but Joe Starrett uh, says we shouldn't go alone, and, uh, and now we've got this man Wilson in town. Uh, you, you think maybe you could sometime go to the blacksmith with me? Well, I might. I'll go with you, Axel, any time you want. I'm not afraid of bullies and cowards. I'll tell them so. The best thing to do is tell them nothing. I'll tell them. You see if I don't. Just see if I don't. <laughs> All right, Joey, jump down and open the gate, son. Yes, Pa. Wait a minute. Hmm? Somebody's doing it for us. Joe, it's Morgan Riker. Drive right in, folks. Brother Roof's come to pay you a little visit. Go on, drive in. It's your place, ain't it? It sure is. Joe, who's that with Riker? Where? Over there, by the barn. See him, Shane, on that white horse? Yeah, I see him. Kind of lean and wearing a black hat. Howdy, Stud. Evening, man. Riker. Hey, something I'd like to talk over with you, Stud. All right. Well, I'll lay it right on the barrel head. How'd you like to work for me? I'm done working for others. I'll pay you top wages. You can run your cattle with mine, and what's more, I'll buy your homes. I'm not interested. Set a price you think is reasonable, Stoddard. You'll find me reasonable, too. You can't force me to do anything, Ruth, because I'm in the right. You? What do you know about right? I come to this country when you weren't much older than, than that boy of yours there. We had some rough times. 
cattle we brought in hazed off the Indians and rustlers. I still got a bad shoulder from a Cheyenne arrowhead. Yeah, and people move in. Fence off my range. Fence me off from water. And I got to keep moving my stock, and you say we... We got no right to the range? No right, huh? I'm not belittling you, Riker. But you didn't find this country. There were trappers here, and there were Indian traders long before you showed up. They tamed this country a lot more than you did. No, 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 look, Stuck. You think you've got the right to say that nobody else has got any? Well, that ain't the way the government looks at it. All right, that's your answer to me. That's my answer. Then you... You don't give a man much choice. All right, Wilson, let's go. Shane, that fellow with Riker... Yeah. Yeah, it's Wilson, all right. The one I was talking about. What do you think uh, Riker wants with him? Well, that's not too hard to figure. Wilson's got only one line of business, and it ain't punching cows. Uh, I like Starrett. But I tell you, I'll kill him if I have to. You mean I'll kill him if you have to. <laughs> That's just what he means, eh, Ruth? Well, I can't have any run in with the law. Grafton's watching us, you know. Well, looky there. Looky there. Who huh? oh, is it? Come here. You too, Ruth. Huh. Couple of those sod busters. Yeah. Shipstead and Stonewall Torrey. Maybe I ought to take care of them. No. No, this isn't the time. I'm not ready yet. How long are you going to keep on waiting, Ruth? Let me get them. When word gets around, the rest of the pack will stampede out of here. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be easy. Well, it, it's got to look right, Wilson. It will. How about it? All right. Hey, you. You talking to me? Huh? Come here. No, Tony. Don't. You go on to the blacksmith, Axel. I'll be along. No, Tony. No. Please. I hear they call you Stonewall. Anything wrong with that? I named a lot of that southern trash after old Stonewall. Maybe because old Stonewall Jackson was trash himself, and Lee and all the rest of them reds. You too. You're a low-down lying Yankee. Prove it. No, Tory. No. I will. I... Oh! Tory! <laughs> One less sod buster. <laughs> Wait a minute, not, not so fast. The, 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 the new man shot him, that, that, that Wilson. I, I'll be across the street and see it. But you didn't hear what they're arguing about. No, no, I, I hear only the anger in the words. Then Tory reached for his gun, but the new man is quick, terrible quick. One shot, Tory is dead. One shot. Poor man. And poor Mrs. Tory and the yes. children. Uh, uh, Marion, you get ready. I'll take you over to stay with her. Yo, I, I already tell her, yo. I see you on the right and Johnson on my way over. I, I tell them, too. And they scared. They say they, they leave the valley right now. Maybe they won't have to. Shane, go hitch up that wagon. Go to town? Yes. No. Joe, I won't let you. Sooner or later, Marion, somebody's got to go. Maybe. But not now. No. You, you can't go alone. The others are all in this, too. You said so yourself, Joe. You said you'd all have to act together. She's right, Joe. And you're forgetting something else. What? Tori's funeral. First things ought to come first. All right. First Tori's funeral. But after that... After that, Shane, I'm making no promises. <laughs> In a moment, act three of Shane. Make a friend and you make an ally. 
There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Since the end of World War II, many American cities have adopted European ones, mainly through the work of a citizen group in New York called Operation Democracy. One of the greatest ties of friendship has been made between American cities and towns in Holland. The people of the American cities supply their Dutch friends with clothing, food. And during the floods early in 1953, the Americans won the undying gratitude of the Hollanders for their help. Several of the American communities have raised money to send a community ambassador to visit the European town they've adopted. And the children keep up a two-way correspondence. To date, several hundred towns in the United States are in contact with others overseas. And the number is steadily increasing. These contacts include towns in 13 European countries, as well as Japan and Hawaii. Recently, three more countries were added, Norway, Yugoslavia, and India, and arrangements have been started to include Turkey, Spain, and Peru. Americans in every walk of life have done something to satisfy their desire for international friendship, and you too can learn, as they did, that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Shane, starring Alan Ladd in the title role... Van Heflin as Starrett, and Ruth Hussey as Marion. On a lonely, windswept hilltop, a dozen men and women pay their last respects to Stonewall Tolly. Every heart trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. In the power and the glory. Well, I guess that's about it. We'd uh, like to say goodbye, Joe. And to you, Miss Starr. You leaving today? Yeah, it's our wagon at the bottom of the hill. All packed and waiting. Come on, Sue. Round up the kid. Well, wait for us, Fred. We're pulling out to... Us too, Fred. Just give us time to load the buckboard. Hold hold on, everybody. Let's not be in such a hurry. All Riker wants to do is to stampede us. Joe, the last time you argued us into staying, Tory was a lie. Yes. What do you want us to stay for? More of this? You know what he wants you to stay for? You gotta agree with him, Shane. You work for Starrett. It isn't that. He's asking you to stay because... Because this valley is your home. It's a place for... All of you to grow up and be happy. That is, if you've got nerve enough not to give it up. Now, that, that's right. Who's Ruth Riker to run us out? The good Lord didn't make this valley for just one man like him. Uh, look. Look there. Fire! Get it on fire! Sure, the, that's Fred Newton. It's his place. Riker set it on fire, I'll bet you. Sure. Riker did it. Riker lit it. I built that cabin with my own hands. Riker don't have no right to do that. Fred, maybe he wouldn't if if you hadn't packed up and left it. It was sort of part of me. Look, it'd still be. We can build it again. That's right, Fred. Now, if we just stick together, we can put your cabin right back up. Can't we, Marion? Yes, Fred, I'll help Sue make new curtains, new rugs, new everything for the whole place. You... Do that for us? No, not just for you, Fred, for all of us. Sure. You're, you're, that's it. This is for everyone who loves this. Now, how about it, everybody? Who's for staying? Well, I will. Same here. All of us. Everybody staying. Looks like Lewis has gone back home. What for? There's nothing but ashes. Maybe he's sticking. Oh, get Starrett. He's holding them all together. Starrett's got to go. I, I warned him twice. He's pig-headed. Now he's got to go. Morgan? 
I want you to ride out to Starrett's place. Uh Uh-huh. Tell him... Tell him things have gone far enough. Tell him I'm beat. Tell him anything. But get him in here. He'll come. He thinks he can settle things by... by talk. And when he gets here? (laughs) Don't start sweating. I'm not asking you to do it. Oh. You, Wilson? Uh Uh-huh. Me. No need for the shotgun, Scott. This is a peace party. You expect me to believe that after your brother fixes us to have my friend Tory killed? No, brother Roof wouldn't kill anybody. Tory was a hothead. Picked on a stranger who could draw faster. Tory wouldn't be reasonable. But you are, Starrett. You talk sense if Ruth talks sense. Isn't that about the size of it? I'm willing to be fair. Sure you are. So's Ruth. That's why he wants to see you. He'll be waiting at Grafton's. With how many others? Why, nobody. Me and the boys are heading out under the rain. Bang, bang, bang! All right. All right, I'll I'll see your brother. That's the spirit. So long, Star. Shane. I'm going to touch up the team. Yes. Joe, you, you can't do it. The Rikers want to trick you. What were you doing listening, Mary? Yes. Joe, it's some kind of a trap. Well, maybe not. Maybe Tory's death has brought Riker to his senses. Made him see that we, that we all got to live together peaceably. You don't really believe that. Well, I'd like to. Besides, when I talk to Riker this time, I'm going to have something to back me up. Shane, tell him he's wrong. Make him listen. It's, it's not my place, Marion. Joe's got to do what he thinks is right. Yeah, I'm doing it. Uh, Shane, don't forget the team, please. Yeah, right away. Just pride, that's all. Silly kind of pride. Joey, please stop it. Joe. Joe, don't I mean anything to you? Doesn't Joey? Marion. Honey, it's because you mean so much to me that I've got to go. Do you think I could go on living with you and you thinking that I'd showed yellow? And Joey, well, how do you think I'd ever explain this to him? Oh, Joe. (laughs) Honey, I've been thinking a lot. And, uh, well, I I know I'm kind of slow sometimes. But, Marion, I see things. And I know that if, if anything happened to me, that you'd be took care of. Maybe even better than I could. Talk as if I'd be glad for you to go. Oh, honey, you're the most honest and the finest girl that ever lived. And I, I couldn't do what I've got to do if, if I hadn't always known that I could trust you. Besides, now, let, let's not go counting me out yet. You know, the game's just starting. Shane, how are you coming? Almost ready. Yeah. Wilson's going to be there. Bang, bang, bang! Why are you telling me? Well, I'm not holding a grudge against you, Shane. That day in Grafton, that... That was a fair fight. But not what Riker's planning now. Bluffing, scrapping, that's one thing. Gunfighting is something else. I'm not hanging around for it. Quitting, Riker? Quitting. Well... Now you know, anyway. 
So long, Shane. Chris. Yeah? I, uh... Thanks. Sure. Have you seen it? No, no, no. Not now, Joy, please. Shane, you're wearing your gun. Uh, hey, Pa! Shane's got his gun on. What's the idea, Shane? This is my kind of game, Joe. You could take Riker, maybe. But not Wilson. Well, then I'll outlast him. No. No, neither one of you are going. This isn't worth anybody's life. What are you fighting for? The shack, this little piece of ground, and nothing but work, work, work. Joe, let's move. Let's leave. It's too late, Marion. And for you, too, Joe. Shane, now get out of my way. Joe, you're staying. Am I going to have to fight you, too? That depends on you. All right. Yes, Ma. Marion, here, here, here's Joe's gun. Hide it, will you? He'll be all right? Yeah, in a little while. This way, no one can blame him for, for not keeping the date. Jane? Wait. Yes? I had hoped you were through with gunfighting. I... I changed my mind. Are you doing this just... For me. For you. Joe. And little Joe. Then we'll never see you again? Tell. Tell Joe I'm sorry. Shane. Take care of yourself. Please. Shane. Shane. Joey. You mustn't feel badly about what he did to your father. He had to. You mustn't hate Shane. I don't hate him, Ma. Shane, I'm sorry. He knows, dear. Shane, I'm sorry. Joey, come back. I'm sorry, Shane. I'm sorry. Joey. Joey. Shane. Shane. Somebody's coming. Huh? Start? Sure. Didn't they tell you he took the bait? Oh, hold on. Morgan, you get up at the top of those stairs, cover us with the shotgun. Right. Wilson, where do you want to be? Right here by the bar. Mm -hmm. Talk, Riker. I'm not dealing with you, Shane. Where's Start? You're dealing with me, Riker. What do you want to talk about? With you, not a thing. Oh, that's too bad. Why? Because talking is a lot healthier than fighting. Don't push it, Shane. Oh. That's your advice, huh? He means it, Shane. He's fast, lightning and fast. Yeah. And you're right in the middle. Roof on one side, me on the other. So you're Jack Wilson. Heard about me, huh? Mm hmm. I've heard. What have you heard? I've heard that you're a low down Yankee liar. <laughs> Prove it. Shotgun. 
turn on you. I was looking through the door and saw him. How did you get here, Joey? Followed you. Ran all the way. I wanted you to know... I don't hate you. And... And I'm sorry. There's no need to be, son. Come on, let's get out of here. Shane! Your arm, it's bloody. It's all right, Joey. As soon as we get back, Ma will fix it up good. Uh, I'm not going back, Joey. Why, Shane? Because a man, well, he has to be what he is, Joey. He can't break them all. I tried it, and it just didn't work for me. But we want you, Shane. Joey, there's no living with a killing. There's no going back. Now, you, you run on home to your mother and tell her. Tell her everything's all right. There aren't any more guns in the valley. Shane! Please, Joey. Go home and grow up strong and straight like your father. Shane! I've got things for you to do. Goodbye, little Joe. Shane! Mother wants you, too! He does! I know he does! Shane! Shane! Come back! Cummings with our stars. And here they are coming forward for a curtain call. Alan Ladd, Van Heflin, and Ruth Hudson. <laughs> I hope you gentlemen will find a time if I take a moment to congratulate Ruth Hussey on her nomination by the Television Academy of Arts and Sciences as Best Actress in a single performance for her portrayal in Craig's Wife last season. Now, we don't mind at all. In fact, we thought she was just great. Yes, indeed. Well, I can see you really are two gallant gentlemen of the Old West. Thank you for the congratulations. Now, about next week's play, Irving. About 20 greats. And we're going to have one of the most popular romantic teams ever to appear, Phyllis Thaxter and Cary Grant, in that delightful comedy, The Bishop's Wife, one of Samuel Goldwyn's most charming pictures. Oh, I just loved it, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you, my lord. Wonderful. Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, inviting you to guess again, again next week, same time, for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.